So this is our base camp. Uh, I don't really do these interview things like self-interview things very good, but this is our base camp. Yeah, brilliant. Miles away from anywhere. Uh, cool. When you're good at this. <laughs> well, the mountain was 7,000 metres, 7,046, I'm told. Never been climbed before. The face was about 1,600 metres. People keep trying to like make me drink rancid tea with salt and butter in. It's bloody horrible. It's, it's wild. You know, I eat salads and drink Segrifredo coffee. I'm not really into rancid butter tea. Paul has climbed a lot with Mick Fowler in the past and they decided that they would probably go separate ways with their climbing partnerships. And so Paul went on a mission of trying to recruit somebody. And at the very, 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 very end, he found me. So Nick, is that feeling good? Beats sport climbing and rock climbing and... You just can't have more fun. It's winter climbing. And... There's nothing more fun than that acclimatisation outing with a massive rucksack, is there? <laughs> it's just great. I don't, yeah. I, I don't know what I've been missing for the last few years. I know, you know. I can't, I can't imagine why young, up-and-coming alpinists, I can't imagine why they don't want to do this, Paul. I've done a lot of expeditions and I've just about got to the end. I, I don't know if I can be asked to do any more. Paul's got, uh, you know, his whole house is full of golden ice axes. And he never fails. So it's like, well, might as well go for that then. Finish on a good one. Hello. <laughs> so Nick. Nice world. Just explain where we are and what the plan is. We're on a big snowy hill, Paul. Um, we're getting pretty wet. Um, the plan is to go and climb that thing by all them streaks onto them snow patches, snow patch, bigger snow patch, angled up onto the summit. Heroes. That's the plan. He told me, he said to me, he said, Fast and light, Nick, it's shit. Fast and light doesn't work. You know, he said, look at all your failures. I was like, thank you, Paul. He said, slow and heavy, that's the way. Let's fill a bag. Let's go day after day after day. He said, we'll finish like mid-afternoon, Nick, when we get a really good camp spot. And that's the way you get to the top. Fast and light doesn't work, Nick. Because this is how me and Mick do it. This is why we never fail. So, this is the first day on, on, we've just had a pretty bloody long day. Bloody powder and, and like waist deep and knackered. So this is, this is the bivvy. This is, this is the Ramsden, the Ramsden five star palatial bivvy. It's, it's brilliant. Look at it. He's hating it. Don't believe a word he's saying, he's hating it. <laughs> This is the bivvy. And that evening, so we couldn't get the tent up, I slept on a ledge that was this big, shivered my bollocks off. Flying bastard. We're, uh, we're above what we think are like the most technical part of the climb. 800 metres above us, but Paul's, Paul's come good tonight with this sort of snow thing to get a ledge. So we're at, uh, what, at Camp 2? 
Yeah. Um, it's been two really tough physical days. But I know, but we've done like what we think is the crux of the whole mountain, and and it's like it's there for the taking, isn't it? Yeah. Oh God, I'm knackered. Time for you to time for you to start cooking. I reckon. Me too. As soon well, as you get your boots off, I can start. Cooking. Oh yeah, well, yeah. You're not looking like a poster boy at the moment, Paul. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I don't think I've ever looked like a poster boy, to be honest. <laughs> Day three on the Ramsden gravy train because we, we set off this morning and we went up the ice field and we're both pretty knackered and um, being old that is um, and we knew there was this traverse onto the ridge the big central ridge line going all the way to the summit so uh, we cut across and onto the ridge and then got to this amazing bivy site we just said stuff it let's have it and it was one o'clock in the afternoon but so that's that's where we are, day three, and we're heading up the ridge tomorrow. Oh. Uh, day four, uh, at about 6,440 metres, um, absolute purgatory. You're kind of getting a bit of a rhythm, and your lungs just explode. <laughs> I kind of get a bit of a rhythm at the start, then all the rope drag and the altitude just hit me at about halfway, yeah. and, then, and then I just go into like meltdown. There we go, that's what we're heading for. That thing there, in the mist, and the snow. I wish we were there now. Oh yeah, I wish we were there now as well. I am bollocks. <laughs> look at it. it. Doesn't look like a thousand feet away, does it? Will he make it in this go? I don't think I did. Oh, the sun's coming out. Oh, hey. Woo! <laughs> I'll go that way. <laughs> wow, hey, we've even got a few down. <laughs> Shit, that was a big peak, wasn't it? Yeah. Crazy. So, we think so. I'm sure the route was a first ascent. I just, yeah. Uh, yeah, amazing. Truly amazing. Just got to get off down really in all this mess. So, um, uh, just how tired do you feel? I'm pretty knackered. Pretty knackered. And um, now we've got to work our way down, which is uh, quite a big thing. Because Paul's dream um, was to climb a north face on the 7,000 meter, unclimbed 7,000 meter mountain and then come back down a different way. And I was, I was basically just along to facilitate Paul's dream, I think. We came down the, the East Ridge, um, which was a magni actually was a magnificent exercise in route finding and mountaineering skill. Yeah, you could, you know, he, he, he did a, an amazing job. He fell down three holes at one point when we were in the fog, and then we decided to stop at that point because it was too dangerous. Then it snowed on us all night long, all night long, and that was probably the most scariest point of the whole thing. Not for Paul. Paul lives in denial. No, there's not a second plan, really. No, we, we, we're kind of in, in a situation and we need to get out of it, don't we, at yeah. some point. We've yeah. kind of nearly run out of food, so... Um, uh, 
There's going to be fuck loads of snow around there. But there was loads of snow around before. Yeah. I but... don't think significantly different, Nick. <laughs> Apart from all the extra snow. Well, I don't think that that's... Yeah, we're buried in because we're in a hole. But is there any more snow than there was yesterday? You know, a few inches. Mm. Only two inches of snow falling. It's like, that's because it's blown all over the mountain pool, apart from where we are, because the, there was gales last night, and there was like monstrous amounts of wind slab all over the ground that we need to cross pool. That's why there's only two inches of snow where we're sat. The sun's come out a bit and it's calmed down, so we decided we just got to go for it really, and try and find this gully. And down on this face, opposite face into our valley. We're actually in the wrong valley at the moment, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, we're in the wrong valley at the moment. <laughs> and then we got to the point where we were going to turn left and drop back down into our valley, but it was really complex, the top of the slope, a lot of slots and crevasses and things. And so we turned right and we dropped down into a, like, a parallel valley to our own, and that was horrific. <laughs> It was no paths or nothing like that. I don't know if anybody's hardly ever been up there. Um, it was scary. Where the fuck are we? <laughs> he bars to be known. I'm not making a film for anybody else from me to remind myself never ever 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 do this again that's it